Well, Putin the cat has something to say about uh, silver. He wants the damn silver up to at least a um, hundred cans of organic, high-quality cat food per ounce of silver, or else the rats in Wall Street are gonna die, man. He's gonna get them, man. He's gonna chop them up and eat them, right? Are we gonna do? Yeah, he's wagging his tail. He's thinking about. It. Right now, he's eating some me meow mix. I think they put some bankster in it. He enjoys eating that, so it's like good carnivorous meat to eat with a little bit of uh, seaweed and stuff. But anyway, get down to some more uh, factoids here. First off, you know, I was, <laughs> they are kind of talking about taper. They're talking about it, right? They're thinking, well, maybe it'll move up, might be not March of 2014, maybe it'll talk about taper earlier than that. I th my gut reaction is, and this is coming from me, because I'm not freaking playing a game now where I, um, you know, I'm getting too much influence by these other guys. I think the whole scenario is going to change around pretty fast because of, uh, you know, they forestalled the problems that are going to happen in October. They're going to happen in early 2014. If they got a problem with raising the budget, the debt ceiling and uh, the budget's bad and all this type of stuff gold is going to go higher that's what's going to happen plus they called basically called Obama a wimp for not going or missing blowing the opportunity when he could have got a sod you know like in other words you know hey I got a line in the sand so to go over the line in the sand you know so he draws another line in the sand he goes hey if you do this and he goes over they go for that <laughs> you know so I think I, I, this thing actually, you know, I don't really know what the hell is going to happen in the Middle East, man. Nobody knows. But I know that's going to be the whole key to oil and the metals going up. It is. It is. That's the whole damn key. If you look even back in 2012, uh, 2011, in April, before that, what was going on? The Libyan War, right? And then Pastor Lindsey Williams was on there and everything like that. And uh, I found out why he says he's not a prophet, because... Uh, I think there's a line in the Bible with Pastor Lindsey Williams. He says, I'm not a prophet. There's a line in the Bible, I think, someplace, correct me if I'm wrong, but someplace it says words to this effect, that if you are, if somebody claims to be a prophet, and he gives a prophecy, and it doesn't come out to be true, you're supposed to kill him. <laughs> says it in the Bible, man. So that's probably why he says he's not a prophet, but... He's just a, scare, he's just a guy scaring the crap out of people. But let me give you why... The metals went down recently here. I was kind of expecting this. You know, I should short it when I actually have good hunches like this, but, you know, pfft, I ain't going to bother with it anymore because, you know, I think uh, pretty much the whole system is going to hit a reset. We're going to have a major financial calamity at some point in the future. Not that I'm playing doom and gloom. You know, that precious metals, fiscal precious metals, is going to be the place to be. Plus, knowing how to have do things, having food on hand, energy on hand, and all this type of stuff. Not that I'm playing like a fear monger, but I think this is actually going to be more necessary. So I'm not worried about you know going in and out of the markets. But I had a, I had a feeling they were going to drop a little bit after Ben Bernanke's speech. But it wasn't really because of Ben Bernanke's speech. It was because of the uh, PMI, the Purchaser Managers Index, from Chicago was released. Uh, it's an indication of how well the manufacturing is, and last month it was 55.7. They expected it to drop real slightly because of the shutdown and everything. It supposedly it jumped all the way up to 65.9. Now I'm going to tell you this. This is just my gut reaction on this. <laughs> I don't trust that number. I think it's bogus. I think it's a bogus number, considering it's coming out from Chicago to Mafia, uh, capital of the world where Obama comes from, you know, endorsed by the mob, Chicago mob, president uh, owned by the Chicago mob guy. Uh, you know, it, maybe it's just a move to bring the metals down, and now they're talking more about taper, and I don't think taper's going to happen actually in 2014. I'm just kind of thinking they're bringing them down because they're going to go up again again. And when they go up again, you know, you're going to get the pumpers out there expecting it to go to some crazy amount of money right away, and it's not. But, uh, you know, that's the deal. But the expectations for 
growth in uh, North America, United States, Mexico, and Canada is looking good for 2014, the expectations for growth. Europe's supposed to recover pretty good. China is supposed to stay pretty steady, maybe around a little over 7% growth. Japan, uh, they'd be doing better if they weren't being having this new consumption tax on them, you know. I mean, I got a lot of respect for the Japanese people. I think they're pretty, pretty damn good people, man. They contribute a lot of good things to the earth, you know, and all the things they've developed over the years. But their economy's stuck in the doldrums. And, you know, that might actually be somehow indirectly through the policies of the, you know, Wall Street banksters, too. I have a, I have a, I have a feeling. It's a feeling. <laughs> How's that? I have a feeling somehow they have, there's something behind it, you know. You know, I even talked about the conspiracy theory with the tsunami. How's that, you know? I don't know, man. I really don't know. But uh, let me put it to you this way. Um, don't go throwing all your money into gold and silver, like I said before. But, you know, you should always be doing, like, the food and fuel and stuff like that. Don't go, like, hog wild to anything. And actually, you know what it is? That damn negative attitude is the worst thing in the world, man, because it makes a self-fulfilled uh, prophecy. But, you know, I don't like these doom and gloomers at all. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out one of the biggest doom and gloomers out there of all-time fame um, recently, probably worse than the H.G. Wells uh, thing that they had with the Martians landing in the 1930s with that radio show. I forgot what the hell that was um, when it scared the crap out of people. And that was that this Harold Camping. Harold Camping. You remember that guy back, I think it was in May? Of a couple years ago, he predicted the end of the world. I think it was 2011 or something like that. Then he predicted it again later on in the year. This guy supposedly, uh, I'm looking at you know information on the net. His net worth worth is 75 million dollars. You know, he had people giving up money left and right. Kind of reminds me of a lot of other pastors out there. So, you know, I basically think religion's a scam. Okay, I don't give a damn what religion it is. It's pretty much a scam, man. That's just how I think of it. But, uh, you know, we might be in for, like, the doldrums here for the next month. But, you know, typically, oil a lot of times goes up in December. A lot of times. And I don't know what the hell that is exactly, but a lot of times it gets a boost in December because of... Um, I guess it's more manufacturing output and stuff like that to try to like get the goods out for the holidays, you know, the Christmas holidays and whatever, Kwanzaa and whatever, what the hell else, whatever's out there, man, the Feast of Saturnus. And, uh, but, you know, it's like it, it possibly could be moving up a little bit more. I don't think, you know, what's going on with oil, oil moved down because inventories have been going up. They've been going up, I forgot what, how many millions of barrels it went up. But they went up consistently the last couple readings they had out there. You know, so there again, you know, Lindsey Williams has been flat out wrong about a lot of stuff. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to tell you a guy that actually called out both uh, Lindsey Williams and Bob Chapman years ago about, you know, all these big predictions they had um, was Joel Skozen. Now, that guy I respect. That guy I respect. I do not know if he's a student of uh, Major Anatoly Galitsyn. Uh, he might be, but his his predictions about you know the West eventually falling, collapsing financially, and you know maybe that leading to World War Three. Man, I don't want to get. I don't even want to talk about that shit, but because it's so bad, you know. But that may happen. It may happen. It's kind of like he, he seems to be a student of this major Anatoly Galitsyn. So if there's a real financial financial collapse, that's one reason you want to have the physical metals. But more important than that, more important, far more important, is to have those blue-collar skilled labor skills. That's more important. That's more important. And, you know, I've been tuning up some of that stuff I learned from ancient years ago, you know, decades ago before. I got into, like, a supreme office mode all the way. And, um, you know, but if, if you always going to take a bet, 
I would still bet heavy on the precious metals, you know. And, you know, this is another thing, observation I made, because they're talking about the Midwest manufacturing has won up. You know, I'm thinking Detroit Steel, too, right? Maybe there's some car manufacturers out there producing stuff. Well, you know, maybe that's that's a reason for gold to take a hit. But then why is palladium and platinum and silver taking a hit if all the Midwest manufacturing went up so ridiculously high? 65.9 is a major, major, major surge in that number. I don't trust that number, man. I think it's BS. I think it's total BS, man. Which makes me think they contrived it for a reason to bring maybe the, maybe they did contrive it to bring the metals down and stuff. I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't trust 90% of these numbers they give us. But, uh, you know, you just have to remember this. You know, these people that are making, raking in all kinds of money from making bets on derivatives and stuff, they're about the most useless eaters going. You know, even Bill Gross is talking about, I don't deserve to make my billions of dollars. You know, I, that ain't no guilt trip. I don't think so. I think that's just more like a way of, uh, he doesn't want the angry crowd to get mad at him. You know what I mean? <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know, when I put out the uh, atti attitude of the elite, I forgot what video that was I put out. You know, they always make it sound like they give a shit <laughs> on the top. They do, man. Yeah, I'm just one of the boys, you know. I just, you know, I worked hard and <laughs> that's how I got all my money. No scamming involved. Oh, they're so full of it. And that's why they actually have this philanthropy and charitable functions all the time. It's basically. Uh, a public relations thing and actually there's always business connections uh, there's always business interests connected to the philanthropy man they're colder than you think man big time big time so but you know if you want if you're getting physical silver physical gold or physical platinum and palladium for like survival purposes I do want to emphasize though that the blue collar skills skilled labor is far more important than that stuff that's a fact man that's a fact. But still continue to save a little bit. And like if you if you got enough, you don't have to keep pouring money into it. But I wouldn't sell any. I wouldn't sell any, man. I think that would be stupid to sell the precious metals at this time. Very stupid. You know, it looks almost like bad when you're looking at what happened in the last couple of years. And you know, this adjustment period can last a lot longer because when it takes off, it doesn't take off like nice and steady like this, it goes like this, fakes you out a few times, and it goes like that. That's when, when it actually goes like this, unexpectedly, that's when you're going to have everybody in the world telling you to buy when it's <laughs> doing that. And that's when it's getting dangerous. And that's when I'm going to be cautiously dumping a little bit of it. A little bit of it. Um, but like I said, I think the big catalyst event for that if you just look back, look back real careful at not like minor, there's always been tensions in the Middle East like pretty much every day, but don't look at the major, major tensions in the Middle East, the major times when they had, you know, Iran and uh, Iraq was, they had the war going on then, they had the six day war going on at one point, another time, um, the war with Libya. You know, even when they had could, you know, when they they had the war against Saddam Hussein, oil prices rose, and that always affects gold prices. Now, it should be a matter of I think this next time. Now I know I talked about the uh, the big find of oil in Australia, and there's a lot of oil on this earth. But you have to remember, if you just can't bring it into uh, out to the market like, you know, nothing, right? It's not very easy to get to. So even though it's there, if there's a major conflict in the Middle East, which I think is coming up, I think it's coming up. Everybody kind of thinks it's coming up. We don't know when, though, right? It's That is really what's going to drive the oil up. Then you're going to see the gold fly up and the silver. The silver is going to fly like crazy then. That's when it's going to fly. I mean, that's when you're going to see other big ticket items because everybody's broke. They're not going to be able to buy them. So, you know, you might want to actually just buy a big ticket item that's uh, marked 50% off with some of your silver at that time. That would be the way to do it, right? 
So anyway, just uh, beware of the snake oil salesmen out there. Uh, you know, with the uh, they call themselves prof prophets. I think the one guy that's not really super popular out there a lot, and you don't see him out there making 50 gazillion videos, is Joel Scorzen. I think, you know, he's kind of like a, he's a prepper, you know what I mean? He's a real practical guy, he's a very intelligent guy. A lot of these other people, like, I get my information, not from an inside source, I read about it in other places, right? And that's where I get my information from. I know... Well, there's a couple things I got from, I would, and there's a few things I guess I got from some inside sources, but nothing currently, nothing I got in, in very recently. You know, some of the stuff about, you know, what happened with, uh, what the Russians do, you know, I knew some of that stuff, and, you know, some of the internet banks out there and stuff like that, I know about some of that stuff. You know, about what they do with Cyprus and the BVI and stuff, you know, I know some of that stuff, but I don't know, like, you know, what the hell's going to happen in the Middle East tomorrow, you know, I wish I would know, I mean, that'd be great, you know, I wish I knew exactly what's going to happen, Lindsey Williams don't know either, that guy's, uh, I don't know, I don't think he has, I think the only guy that that guy had was a legitimate insider that was giving him straight scoop was that Ken Fromm, that guy, this new guy, even Joel Skozin, if I'm saying his name right, he kind of like Put suspicion on him. <laughs> I got major suspicion of him now, man, big time. But um, I think that the deal is going to, well, because we could see it in the news, I think the deal is going to play out where there's going to be major, major, major tensions in the Middle East. Um, there's going to be, Obama's going to be pushed into going after Syria, and then you're going to see something happen with Iran at one, at one point in time. I don't know what the deal is with Obama, man. I really don't know. It's almost like, you know, he gets accused of working with um, working with Jews in Israel. Then he gets accused of being a Muslim. And, like, you know, uh, the one thing I know with Obama, though, is, like, he's um, not a strong president, basically. He's basically kind of like uh, he owes his whole everything to uh, Valerie Girat, you know, and it, the Chicago mob. <laughs> so, you know, and we, even when we criticize this guy, it's like, you know, what the hell can we say? I mean, who the hell? He's just a figurehead, right? He's just a figurehead. So, that's just how it is, man. But anyway, uh, Putin the cat is getting hungry for uh, having much higher silver prices. He wants silver to go to at least... 100 cans of organic cat food a day, or uh, he's going to start eating up them rats in Wall Street and, uh, you know, having fun uh, chomping them up. Anyway, that'll be cool.